Hello there, and welcome to the back room. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing schematics for the game industry, specifically schematics on how to create graphite. Uh, many of these schematics are being pulled from the website Mindustry Schematics, so if you want to look those up later, you can just search for graphite under the search criteria there. Uh, as I rank these and talk about their different strengths and weaknesses, I'll be looking at a few different criteria, three main ideas, plus whatever other insights that I have. Essentially, we want to look at whether um, the schematic is simple, and does it do what it's supposed to do, uh, compared to the benefit that we want out of it. Like, for example, you know, if it's jammed, is it easy to repair? Is it an effective use of space? Like, is it, is it too big for what we're doing? Does it block conveyor belts, drills, or, you know, other pipes, things like that? Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, we also have cost efficiency, right? What we can think of that as just, you know, for the resources that we spend on it, uh, like power, water, you know, resource, just general resources, is it wasting any of those, right? Are we wasting space? Is, it, is this too big for what we need it to do? There's a lot of schematics out there that, that do that. Uh, and then functionality. Does this actually do what it's supposed to do? Can we scale it? Uh, can we rotate it easily? Feed its inputs and outputs, etc. Uh, and then we got to think about when are we going to use this? Are we going to use this early game, mid game, late game? Uh, is, it, is this schematic useful on all three, one or two of those, etc. And like I mentioned, any other insights that uh, you know, I can come up with I'll try and throw those in as well. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Let me pull up the images here. We'll talk about them one at a time. All right, so the first one here I have is called Advanced Graphite. Uh, this one uses an interesting idea. So um, instead of grabbing your coal, which is one of the main, the main ingredient for making graphite, to create the, your graphite, this person is using just water. Water is fed into a spore cultivizer, which is then fed into a core press, which is then fed into, or sorry, spore press, which is fed into a coal centrifuge, which is then fed into a graphite press. Okay, so uh, this one has got a few things that are going for it that are well. You can you can see Im immediately that this is just a repeating pattern. You can scale two of these graphite presses, um, and then you can extend it off to the right as far as you want. Um, you have to put this on water, I will point out, because the drills are built into this. Um, and it should just spit out your graphite down at the bottom. It looks like you, you get some more water down here, so you need water at the top. So this would have to be placed pretty much on water. Okay. Um, the idea is pretty simple. You just take in some water from top and bottom, and you're good to go. Problem is you need a lot of water. So like on a level where there's a lot of islands, this might be good. As long as there's water between the islands, you could plop one of these. It is very large. I would have cut this off at this point where there's only two of these uh, presses here. Uh, it is a little bit large. Also, I will point out that there's, the ratio is really wrong on this. Okay, You've got two water to a single ore cultivator. You need three of these drills, of these pumps, uh, to one of those. And then for a spore press, you need five of the cultivators. So the ratio is all wrong. Uh, so I, for this one in general, I don't like it. I mean, the idea is cool. You can take in some water and just create your graphite from that. But just it's too large. The general idea of it uh, is good, but I'm going to have to give it F tier. Sorry. <laughs> it's just uh, not going to function for what we need it to do. Initializing disintegration. All right, going on to the next one. So this one is a, fa is, is a, is a favorite, right? This one is one of the first schematics you'll probably ever use because you need graphite early in the, the game. And this is a very simple you just take in coal. It identifies what resource you need. And, and for a lot of players, it's really hard to remember. So what am I supposed to feed into this manufacturing building? <laughs> I, I, when I play with this with friends and they have never played ministry, I get that a lot, right? Uh, and so I find it helpful to leave hints in the, the schematic what it does, right? In this case, you need to put in coal in the top and you'll get out graphite from the bottom. This one is great because it doesn't take up very much space. It doesn't, you don't really have to worry about it getting jammed because you can see on the conveyor belts what it is going to put out. Um, doesn't take any power. It's very compact. You can put two or three of these in line and use routers on the top to feed in to each of them and collect them in the bottom. Um, you can scale this to an extent. Uh, granted, you probably need to upgrade the conveyor belt to use a titanium conveyor belt um, at some point. But 
This will work probably early, mid game. As you get to the later game, you're going to need much more production. So I'm going to give this one. Uh, I mean, it's not an S tier because it doesn't produce a ton. It's it, it, probably a B. It's, it's very solid. You you will use this early the game, maybe a little bit of the game, in, or middle of the game, but uh, eventually this one falls out of favor for others. Okay. All right. The next one here is we have the Graphite 4 Multipress. So this one uh, is actually kind of a, interesting because they took the press and duplicated it vertically. You really only need half of this schematic. I'm not going to dock any points for that because this is actually a really good schematic, but I would uh, really only save one of these because then you can scale it or and, and uh, flip it yourself. Um, that would take up less space. if You don't need this much graphite. But essentially it takes in coal from the top It's got or the bottom. It's got uh, your water right there next to your graphite presses, advanced graphite presses. It has a little node indicating, hey, you need to feed power to this. And I like that signaling. So whenever somebody is new to this, they're like, oh, why is this not working? Oh, well, it needs power because there's nothing connecting to the power node. So I think this is a really good one. It's not going to work for you early game because I think the graphite press, I uh, think this might require plastanium. I'd have to look that up. But I think this one is definitely uh, a later, a mid, to, mid game to end game kind of schematic. And I think I'm going to put this in the the A tier. Four capacitors out of five. It's a good one. We'll use it definitely uh, if you need a lot of graphite. Okay. Uh, you can scale these by putting multiple of these in a row or flipping them, as you can see in, in this uh, schematic. So I think this is a pretty good one. So definitely an A tier. Okay, going on to the next one. Uh, this one was an interesting one as I was looking through. I saw this one. I was like, I've used this idea before and I like it. Okay. What does this got going for it? Well, it's easy to understand. It's just the same thing repeated going horizontally to the right. And so this is great for scalability. Uh, it's easy to use, easy to understand. You just need to feed power to it, which I, I will dock that a point here because it doesn't have any power nodes to indicate, hey, you need to put power. Probably would have been good to a little power node along the top up here so you can see, hey, we need power here. Um, but it, what it does is it takes coal on this plastanium conveyor and pulls it off using these unloaders, feeds it into your uh, graphite press, and would spit it out the bottom. And that's another thing. You probably should put a conveyor belt along the bottom just to indicate that that's where it needs to come out. But it could really come out any direction. It makes more sense to come out the bottom, though. Um, so there, you could even put another plastanium conveyor belt along the bottom to feed it out, and you're good to go. So uh, I think the challenge here is that these unloaders only unload three or four, I think it's three uh, items at a time. So it will be a bottleneck right there. Uh, so I'd have to check the the uh, efficiency on this, but I think you're going to have a problem getting enough coal to keep this press busy. But I like the idea. It's a good idea. Um, I'll probably give it, I'm torn on a B or a C. Probably a C just because it doesn't have, I don't think it has enough of unloading of the coal. So it would get a little bit behind. But it's a really good idea. I like the scalability as it goes to the right. Uh, you could fix this by adding probably a little one more space here each of these and get one more unloader feeding into this uh, and you could also put your power node probably right there as well so good idea needs a little bit of work um yeah we'll go into the next one here the next one here is a large graphite 2 multipress got that one wrong or maybe it is laro uh i'd have to look at that one um i think that's might have been who actually uploaded it so maybe we'll just say it's laro all right so we got laro graphite press 2 this one's great because it's very similar to the one we saw before, the Graphite 4 Multipress. But in this case, it has the drill built into it. It's got the power node. It's got the uh, conveyor belt coming out the top, so you know that's where it needs to... It's what's going to output as two of these. Uh, it's got its water drills built into it. It's really good. I think the only shortcoming here is that it has the drill built into it, which is a nice... It's good, but it's, not, it's also bad because if you build this on a small coal spot on the map that's great because you know if you only have like a four by four section this covers it you're good to go but if you have a very large coal section you're then losing space to these drills off to the side you can't use that coal for more mining so it's good in many situations and not so good in all of them now if it gives you enough graph enough graphite with just this you're fine right you don't really need to have additional mining so uh, i'm going to go give this one a b i think it's a really good one it's not necessarily as good as this top one because of the downside of having the drill built in. It's got some good pluses, but it's not as flexible as the one up above. Does it 
Well, I'll give it a B for that. Moving on to the next one. All right, so here we have the Olex Graphite Dark and Dark Sand version of Graphite. This one I included because I I like the idea, but it has a lot of things pro uh, wrong with it, right? In this case, it's so complicated. What does this even do, right? You have it needs sand coming in, so this little drill here is going to create the sand. This large oil drill is going to pull up the oil, which is then going to feed it to your full centrifuge, which then needs to go across a bridge up to the top, which then spits out your uh, graphite graphite press. You got water to each of these. It does have an overdrive projector, which is really good, but I don't know if this is going to be effective. I don't know if you have enough sand here. To me, I think this is not going to produce enough sand for you. I have to double check this and actually run it, but just looking at it, I get the, oh, wow, this is too overly complicated. I put this on my map. Somebody's going to feed something into your, like, sand someplace they shouldn't into this bridge over here, and it's going to clog up. And I, I'm not going to know how to fix it, so I'm going to have to delete the whole thing and then or just inspect every single element. And in Mindustry, time is your greatest asset. Um, you have lots of resources. They never run out. So if you don't, if you have to spend time looking and figuring out what this does, it's not going to do you any good. So I'm going to actually give this an F tier. I think the idea of being able to just get um, graphite from sand is cool, but if this is too large. You'd have to have a very large sand piece. It gets in the way of your conveyor belts and your other items. So sorry, I'm going to have to give you an F. All right, moving on to the next one, we have the tileable graphite early. So this one I've included because it's fairly easy to understand, and it follows a similar concept that we use for the other schematics where we feed in our resources from the right. You'll see that you'll, you'll, people will feed it in from the right and then it'll have the resources come out the bottom. However, this one, you just you can take this and you scale it going to the right, adding two or three or four. You feed in coal from the top and you get graphite out the bottom. This one is good, but I think it's good because it follows the similar ideas that we have for other for other schematics. However, with this case, in, in this case, it takes up so much more space than this uh, graphite 1P here, and it only has one press. So it's it's okay. I'm going to have to give it a C. It does what it's supposed to, but it's not very space efficient and not one I would probably use. Mostly an inconvenience. Okay, moving on, the next one we have is the... <laughs> so it's got some interesting name. I, this apparently means graphite in Bulgarian. So you have graphite. Graphite is the name. Um, this one has six graphite. Uh, manufacturing places it takes in coal from the bottom and it passes coal up to the top and only graphite is allowed to escape so the good news here is that your graphite is going to get generated and passed up it's a good idea i have seen a version of this where there's only four uh, i've never actually used the six one so i think this is a good idea i'm going to go ahead and say that it works like the one that's just four uh and we're going to give this one I think it's if you get too much graphite in this. No, I think this should work. This should work. We're going to give this an S. I like this one. I think it's a really good one. Uh, it is effective for what it needs to do. It takes up very little space. It is easy to understand. I mean, if you put like a, a, a sorter down at the bottom, you could make it a little more easier to understand what it's doing. Pass up the uh, coal through the middle and then graphite at the top. So I think that works great. Again, we'll give that an S. Oops. Okay, so this one is there's only two left these two are my creations actually so when uh, i was trying to come at a solution for how to manage graphite i stepped back and said all right so for all of my resources is there a way i could standardize these so that they're all the same shape uh, and that's one of the problems one of my cr critiques about a lot of these other designs is that they're all different shapes okay, so in this one you have a long skinny rectangle this one again a long skinny rectangle this one is a giant square. This one is almost square. It's pretty good. Um, but this one is long and skinny. And so you have to fit these on the map where you have space. Uh, but And they're all different sizes. And it's not necessarily easy to tile these ones next to the designs for your other resource generators. Okay. So I said, let's make a schematic that is square and follows the standard. In my case, I have the resources coming in from the left. And going out the bottom. And this, so you take the coal, pass it in here. It gets passed to all four of these uh, creation or these uh, 
resources get passed to all four of these presses and then it comes out the bottom. Now the benefit to that is that it's very square. I can tile these with a couple spaces between them going off to the right or to the bottom and I just feed in the coal. This one was one of my first attempts and will work for some of your initial levels. Um, I think it, it has easy to understand what it does. It's effective. It's got a pretty effective use of space. There are a couple extra spots here, but pretty good on that. Uh, you can scale it by putting multiple in a row and in a tile. Um, it can be used early game, middle game, maybe not so much late game. You know, in general, it's pretty good. Oh yeah. The problem with this one is that it only can accept resources from the left side, and I don't like that. So I'm going to give this one uh, a B, and you'll see why as I go to the next one. Okay, so this one here is my favorite uh, schematic of all the ones I've got. So sorry, spoiler alert, it's going to be an S tier. Personal bias detected. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so in this case, um, it it's a perfect square. All the cells are filled, and you can feed in the coal from any direction. Okay, as long as it touches one of these squares, these uh, presses will share the coal using these unloaders. There's an unloader underneath this bridge between all four of them. And so, you again, you can feed in the coal from any direction, and it will feed out the bottom and go to where you need it to go. So this is the, the standard that I came up with was, I want to have a schematic that feeds in resources from any direction and outputs it out bottom or you know one direction, right? So I can I can take as little time thinking about this as possible. And and really in ministry, that's the short resources is is time. Granted, you can pause the game. It's all about how fast can I build this uh, and build it quickly and efficiently. These can be scaled where you stick them all right next to each other. So you can put three or four in a row. You can put three or four vertically. Uh, it's it's really effective. Uh, in that regard, you just feed in the conveyor belts with the resources from any direction, again, and feed out the bottom. So very effective, very useful. One downside is that it does require silicon to create these unloaders. And so I don't think it won't work for early game, but it will work very well for late game and end game. All right, so that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed going through and seeing these various uh, ideas on how to create graphite in the game industry. If you uh, have any questions or better ideas or additional schematics I should look at, go ahead and comment in the comments below, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching.